much, and it's been really good to see the talk so far. It's really interesting stuff, and uh, hopefully I'm not going to break any of the rules or contradict what you said so far. Um, yes, I'm going to be talking about visualizing the world data, uh, and it was only a couple of years ago that I was talking about uh, what was talked about in the keynote about pre-attentive or subconscious things. I realized that I work on Macs and my main and it only kind of occurred to me is a normative determinism sequence. Anyway, some things <laughs> that I'm going to come back to kind of through the talks that have been talked about before is, you know, with all of these visualizations, we, uh, what, what do you want to do with it? What do you want to do? And so I came up with this uh, corny acronym uh, a couple of days ago. Um, because sometimes you just want to attract just want to show something attractive that people can look at. I go, ooh, what's that? But sometimes you may want to particularly inform them or inform themselves or, or inform yourself, as we talked about earlier on, about you know, not using things necessarily for communication, but using them for kind of understanding your data. Or you want to motivate people to do something, uh, to read your tweet or cite your paper or you know, just do something. So yeah, a bit about my kind of history, I've got a timeline kind of going on there, as uh, Amirian said before. So, um, yeah, I mean, I worked at the uh, Government Fisheries Advisory Service for a while, and then I uh, foolishly uh, retrained to be a primary school teacher for a year, but it was too hard. Uh, so then I became freelance, which is what I'm doing at the moment, and I'm also working at the Liverpool School of Tropical Medicine uh, on some Insecticide resistance products. But I need to R. Yeah, that's kind of R is my kind of thing at the moment. But within my uh, brief period in teaching, I did write a paper on uh, data visualization for apiaroids. So if you want to have a look at that, um, do that. And as uh, Martin was saying earlier on, I've recently been kind of uh, informed by a lot of what's going on in data journalism things. So uh, this by Alberto Cairo. I uh, encourage you to follow him on Twitter or kind of have a read. Really, particularly the functional art is really good about things about kind of design principles from a kind of journalism perspective. And um, some definitions in there. So this one I thought was interesting about the visualization and talking about how it's not just to kind of convey a predefined message. It's allowing people to kind of extract their own kind of learning from data. But obviously there are kind of tensions there. And sometimes you do want to get across your very kind of defined message. Um, so there you've got a kind of attention. Do you trust your kind of user to find things out for themselves? Or do you want to make sure they get particular things? And obviously, yeah, depends on what you're trying. And so other tensions between kind of originality, if you want to kind of attract someone in to look at what you're doing, then you want to make it new and different and exciting. But does that mean that you're going to break the rules because you uh, are kind of trying to do new things? And then as been talked about before, kind of tensions between Uh, between simplicity and including uncertainty. Uh, so, uh, yes, this was uh, kind of came from some of the kind of uh, original work where they. Uh, where they actually kind of tested graphical perception things, sat people down in front of different visualizations and said, you know, can you tell which is bigger or smaller out of these? Um, and that led to kind of some, uh, you know, kind of recommendations on which things people perceptually are able to kind of see differences between. Um, but this is about, you know, these are about strict quantitative differences. And it isn't always that you're wanting to kind of allow people to see uh, purely kind of quantitative differences. So that's kind of some of the theory, but then some of the practicalities about what do I ask myself uh, when I'm choosing something, and it tends to be a bit more prosaic. Um, but, you know, is it free and open, or, and for me, is it enough? Have you got your adapter? Uh, yes, maybe it's the, the adapter. Did you find that flickering annoying or was it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to look at it too much. Yeah. Uh, 
concerns about, you know, is it easy for me to learn, um, and is it kind of flexible enough uh, to do different things that I might want to do with it later on. So what I'm going to be talking about is kind of map world data. So this I wrote a package in R about five years ago, just kind of doing just straightforward kind of mapping things like this. Not because it was particularly fancy or a difficult thing to do, but you know, kind of hardcore R people could do it at the time, but making something that's easier for people to use and kind of do these kind of things. But again, with some kind of map like that, there's a whole bunch of different things that you might be wanting <coughs> to kind of communicate to people. Is it just broadly the geographical pattern, you know, north versus south or east versus west? Do you want people to identify particular countries, even if it's just in ranking, which ones are bigger or which are the biggest and the smallest, um, or extremes. And then going back to some of the previous things, maybe, maybe you don't really care about what you, particular things you're getting across, you just want to say, hey, look at my data, and then kind of point people to, uh, to read something. Or it may be, hey, look at my data visualization method. are a pain, or well, they can be a pain, because countries are different shapes and sizes, you know, so going back to some of the work about kind of perception, you know, everything's different shape and size, and that's going to influence how people, what information people take in from it. And there's just too many of them, you know, there's like 190 odd, depending on which interpretation you use, so how do you get all that information across at one time? And your reader is unlikely to know where they all are, so... And some countries are too small, and they're just going to disappear if you do something like that. And, you know, these issues are difficult to sort out, or can be difficult to sort out, certainly politically, if you want to do it on the ground. Uh, but, uh, you know, there are methods of doing that uh, within data visualization. So, Ranieri asked me to talk about kind of cutting edge stuff. So, uh, this is a uh, plot from 1894. Uh, uh, what we a few years ago from the Grand McNally Atlas of the World. And you know, there's some really interesting stuff in there. So they've got kind of two uh, bubbles, uh, the one on the left is population, and the one on the right is area for each country. So you can see something about uh, population density by you know, the relative size of those bubbles. Um, so yeah, you can see the British Empire is huge at this stage, but then you realize that all of this bit is India. So, uh, but by taking a different kind of encoding, you sort of expose all sorts of interesting patterns and things that's going on. And I still look at this on my bookshelf and kind of go, oh, really? And a kind of more modern version of that, the uh, Gapminder world maps. Who's seen, uh, who's seen the Gapminder presentation by Hans Rosen? Or oh, about half. Right, a half of you that haven't, look up there's a web link down there to a TED talk. Gave in 2008. It'll take 20 minutes of your life, but it's kind of the best lecture I've ever seen. It ends up with I should, I should it away, ends up with him swallowing a sword on stage, uh, <laughs> which you wouldn't think. But effectively, uh, this becomes an animated graph. Um, so you've got, I think there's five different dimensions that you're kind of showing there. You've got, you know, the x and the y. You've got the size of the bubble. And then you've got things animated across time um, and color. Uh, I really like these kind of a slope graph. So this is just looking at um, two time periods. Uh, I think this was looking at change in happiness score, you know, happiness score over time. Uh, so the nice thing about that is that you can see. So this is a time period one. This is a time period two. And so it's very easy to see which ones went up and which, which countries went up and which countries went down. Uh, this is a nice fancy D3, D3 interactive thing that you can kind of click on and select particular countries. You still got the problem that there's too many countries, so you know, when I was trying to put this on the slide, it's very difficult for you to see what's going on. But it does allow you to kind of get into the data and uh, see some kind of patterns. Uh, this is similar to some of the kind of surplus plots that were shown in the keynote, um, this is actually looking at migration patterns, uh, and I really like this because it's done really well, um, and this is all available as an R package, if you follow that link, and you can kind of do this, I think, 
this is kind of using my page to map downloads my page. Um, and you know, I did this about five years ago, and it's now been downloaded 68,000 times, which is amazing. Uh, but I kind of wish that I'd, if I got 50p for every time that was downloaded, I, you know, that might help me fund continuing development of it. So in terms of sustainability, I had some funding initially to kind of start that up, but I don't have any funding to deal with people that send me requests to, why don't you do this, how long would this be work now? And, uh, Kind of for that reason, uh, you know, there are now, well, I would suggest, better options available for doing this project. Uh, yeah, don't use my software, use some of them. Uh, oh, but if you do want to do it, listen. Uh, so, just briefly talk about uh, in R, there's a great thing called Shine that allows you to create uh, interactive web interface things. Uh, so, you can go along to this and look at how it can change how different you can make the same data look by just changing what categorization and what uh, color scheme you have. So I'm running out of time and it's nearly lunchtime. So just to recap, uh, what's your main aim? Do you want to attract or to inform? Do you want to motivate? So and assess the trade-offs of the different methods. But there are lots of great resources out there and Um, yeah, and shameless self plug. So I'm freelance and I do this kind of thing. So if you need anything to do, then uh, get in touch. But, uh, thanks very much. Um, 